So I'm moving this group of chicks from the house outside. And the majority of them are those Andalusian Bantams. So I figured it'd be a good chance to uh, explain how the gene for blue works. Now, it doesn't matter if the bird is solid blue or a blue-breasted red or a lemon blue or a blue-tailed Wheaton. Blue works the same regardless of pattern. That's the first thing, all right? Now, blue is a, what they call, semi-dominant gene. And the funny thing about it is it gets its name from the impure variant, which gives the bird a leaden or slaty gray-blue appearance. A bird that is blue in color has only one copy of the gene. Now, when you breed them, you got a potential for three variations. You get black, like this little guy. Alright, solid black. You get blue. Which, that's your blue. And you get what they call splash, which is what the majority of these chicks are. Now, splash might look white, but the funny thing is, it is actually the pure form of the gene. Okay? Black has no copies of the blue gene. It did not inherit it from either parent, and therefore, if you breed black to black, all you're going to get is black. The blue got one copy of the gene from one parent. So it's got one copy for blue, one copy for black, if you want to think of it like that. And that's how you get your blue color. Splash, over here, got a copy of the blue gene from both parents. So that bird will produce splashes if bred to under splashes because that is the pure form. This is black. It's pure, black is the pure form for not having the gene. Splash is the pure form for having the gene. So you breed black to black, you're going to get black. Splash to splash, you're going to get splash. But here's where it gets fun. You breed a splash to a black and what you are doing is you're going to produce nothing but blue chicks okay so if you want to produce a lot of blues you have to breed a splash to a black to get just sheer number of blues but the general consensus of the old-time breeders is that to get good blues you don't want to use the splashes at all if you want a good colored blue now those three yellow chicks, in case you're wondering, are buff lace Polish, but we're not talking about them today. So, if you breed blue to black, that's where they say you get your best colored blues. And when you do that, half of the chicks will come black, half will come blue. This does not mean that if you hatch four chicks, that you're going to get two blues and two blacks. This means statistically over hundreds of chicks, that's what you're going to end up with. You might hatch ten chicks and get them all black out of a mating. Or one blue, whatever. But over the long haul, that's how it's going to pan out. Now, if you breed two blues together, you're dealing with two birds that are impure for the gene. And as a result, you're going to get all three colors out of them. Because you're going to get splashes when the blue gene from both parents match together. You're going to get black from when the black gene from both parents lines up together. And you're going to get more blues from when they get one or the other. If I remember off the top of my head, I think it's 50% of the chicks would come blue. And a quarter splash and a quarter black. But I might have that mixed up. And as I said at the start of the video, it doesn't matter what the pattern is. So, especially if you game fowl breeders out there, you'll see bloodlines that are called blues, but the roosters are red and white. Well, those roosters are pure blue. 
because those white feathers aren't really white feathers. They're splash feathers, like these little guys right here. Okay? A splash is going to vary in its color. They could be almost solid white, which the father of some of these chicks is. He's basically pure white. I've also had some that were what I call a loud splash, and they were smoky gray all over with random black and blue feathers. Looked like confetti. But the gene still works the same regardless. Now when you throw a pattern on it, such as, let's say, Wheaton, because it's the most common pattern in game fowl, and you get a splash variant, you get those birds that are red and white. That's, people mistake them for red piles, but that's a completely different gene. If you look at this little chick's wing here, he's probably not going to sit still. You can see blue on that flight feather right there. That's typical of a splash. And if you look at a lot of those birds, let's say minor blues or Koopman toppies, you're going to see black or blue speckling, especially in the tails and the flight feathers. And that's kind of how you tell the difference between them and a red pile. But it's a fun little project. It's actually a pretty easy project for kids for the science fair at school. You know, they can learn about dominance and inheritance that way. And it'll also help you to a degree in determining the parentage of birds if you're running a mixed flock and you've got some blue birds in your flock as well. So I hope that helps you understand the blue. If you've got a couple questions just leave them in the comments and uh, be sure to like and subscribe and share.